Okay, welcome to part two of our lesson on uh, lines in R2. So we just defined vector and parametric equations of lines in R2. So now we're going to basically look at examples in this video. So we want to find the vector and parametric equations of the line passing through these two points. So let's give it a, a rough sketch. Just see what it looks like. Okay, so I'll plot those two points. Uh, so minus two, one. Really rough sketch. So that's uh, B. And then A was one, three. So he's up there. So we get this line looking something like this. Okay. So now we need the vector equation. So first, like, what do we need first? Um, this is a type of question you might have been asked in grade 9 where you asked to find the equation line passing through these two points and what was the first thing you always did? Always find slope first, right? You always need to get the slope first. So what concept is analogous when you're doing vector equations? In analogous to slope or giving you the same information as the slope is the direction vector. So find the direction vector. So that's always going to be your first step. Find direction vector m. Okay. So what's a vector parallel to this line? Well, how about the vector ab? How about I let m equal to ab? Right? ab is obviously parallel to this line. It's on the line. Um, and you could use ba if you wanted. Actually, the way I drew it. I <laughs> sorry, I drew ba, but we could do ab. Let's do ab. Um, so m, how do you find the vector a, b? We just take the b coordinates minus the a coordinates. So that would be minus 2, minus 1, 1 minus 3. So minus 3, minus 2. So here is a direction vector. So you can think of it as down 3 over 2 to the left. So that's what's happening here. So here's a direction vector. Um, sometimes you want to reduce it. Like, let's say you got 6, 4. You might reduce that to 3, 2 you know, by multiplying by a half. And that's generally what we'll do. Uh, but you don't have to. You, could, you can use any, any direction vector you want. I'm going to use this direction vector right here. So now that I have the direction vector, I know that the general equation of a vector uh, of the vector equation looks like this where m1 m2 is a point on the line t is a real number so that's easy I just found that right t times minus 3 minus 2 what's the point I'm going to use well I could use either a or b so I'll take A because that's first. So there's my vector equation. Done. And what about parametric equations? So parametric equations are just the uh, hold on, let me just vector equation. So that's right there. Now we'll do our parametric equation. So that's just the components. So x is equal to 1 plus, well, it's a negative, so it won't be plus, it'll be minus 3t. And y will be equal to 3 minus 2t, where t is a real number. Then, so vector equations parametric equations. Okay, so second part, we just found the equations. So we know the equation, the vector equation is that, parametric equations are these. Uh, we want to ask ourselves, or we want to figure out, is this point 5, 8? So let's look at the graph. 5, 8 would be, you know, 5, 8, somewhere up here. Not sure, somewhere around there. Is this point on the line? It's from the graph, it looks like it might be. Um, so 
let's, well, I'll need the equations. Let's ask yourselves, you know, when an when equation was in y equals mx was b form, this is a very easy question, right? You just sub this in for or y, sub this in for x, and see if left side equaled right side, and if it did, then yes, it was on the line. If not, it wasn't on the line. Well, now, I mean, that's not going to work because you have more equations. So what you have to do is sub into parametric so notice if I subbed y into this parametric I'll get a value of t if I subbed x into this parametric I'll get a value of t so what should happen if it's on the line um, and t should be equal if it's not equal it's not on the line. So x equals 1 minus 3t. So x is 5. So 5 minus 1 equals minus 3t. 4 equals minus 3t. So t equals 4 over negative 3. And y equals 3 minus 2t, y is 8, 3 minus 2t, minus 2t, so we get t equals minus 5 over 2. Different values, right? Not equal, therefore point is not on line. Okay, so that's part B. Uh, now we're going to go to part C. Part C is going to be find the y-intercept of the line. Um, so to remind you, that there are the parametric equations. So again, this would have been uh, a very easy question if it was, well, if it's in y equals mx plus b form, the y-intercept's very obvious, right? But it, let's say it's in standard form. How would you get the y-intercept? If you remember, you'd set x equal to 0 and then solve for y. Well, now we have two equations. So if we set x, let x equal 0, what would we then solve for? We'd have to solve for t. What would we then do? Well, let's do that. So let's let x equal 0. So this is step 1. Let x equal 0. So I'm going to get 3t equals 1. t is a third. So now what do I do with this, this value for t? Well, now I can put this into the y parametric equation. So step two, let t equal a third. So y is equal to three minus two times a third. So three minus two over three, common denominator of three. So this is y. So therefore, y-intercept is 7 over 3. Okay, so, I mean, this, these two examples, b and c, you might be thinking, okay, vector equations, parametric equations seem like a pain in the butt, right? The, there's more steps involved in everything. In order to find if a point's on the line, I have to check two equations. In order to find a y-intercept, instead of just subbing it into one equation, I have, to, I have to sort of do this roundabout, sub it into one, take that value, sub it into another. So there seems to be more work. And why is there more work? Okay. Why is this harder?
Okay, the reason it's more work is because of this extra, this this variable t, right? With um, you know y equals m x plus b, or the standard equation, you only have two variables which relates y to x, right? So if you want y, you just need to know x, and you just can go back and forth. But with these new parametric equations or vector equations, we have three equations. We have x equal to um, x a1 plus mt, so we have x related to t, and then we have y equals uh, a2 m2 t, so t is related to y, right? So if we want x, we have to first get t, and then t can give us y. So there's kind of this this in between step of t. So it's it's creating you know an extra step. So you have to kind of go through that extra step. So you might be saying, well, what's the point? Why why have these equations? Um, what's the point? And there's a few reasons. Um, one is that this concept of vector equations or, or parametric equations is going to generalize better to R3, so in three dimensions. So if you think about it, um, M, the slope, I mean that has meaning in R2, but what's the slope in R3? There's no meaning in R3, right? You can't talk about rise over run because there's an extra dimension. So these are going to generalize better to, to R3. The other thing is sometimes this extra parameter of t or this extra variable is useful, right? Let's say t is time. Um, you know, it, it can tell you how the where the position is at a given time, where you, and you can just let time change. So there are uses to this equation, even though it seems like more work at this point. So let's just do one more example. Let me write it down. So, uh, final question, uh, what is the line perpendicular to that original line passing through the origin? So here's the original line. So recall, what does perpendicular mean? Well, perpendicular means, um, you know, meets at a 90 degree angle. So, this is the direction vector, m of our original line, minus 3, minus 2. We need a perpendicular direction vector. direction vector, dv for direction vector. Okay, so how are we going to find a vector perpendicular to this? Well, I need a vector m perpendicular such that m perpendicular dot m, two vectors are perpendicular, the dot products zero. So I just need a vector which will give me the dot product zero. And you might be, like, hopefully you can see that this corresponds to a slope of rise, which is the y, minus 2 over 3, which is 2 over 3. So if you wanted a perpendicular slope, you know, you just do the reciprocal, so flip the fraction and change the sign. So we, we'll do the same thing to get um, m, m perpendicular vector. So so this is perpendicular. So instead of uh, you know flipping the fraction, we'll just flip, flip the x and y, and then change the sign of one of them. So in this case, I change the sign of the two. So this is my perpendicular vector. And if you want to check that this is perpendicular to this, just do the dot, dot product. So two negative three dot uh, negative three negative two is equal to negative 6 plus 6 equals 0, therefore good, perpendicular. Okay, so our line will be, we know the direction vector, plus t uh, 2, negative 3. t is a real number. What's the point? The point is the origin, 0, 0. And now, do you really need this? The answer is no, right? You don't need to say you're adding 0. So we can just leave it like this. So that's the equation of the perpendicular line passing through the origin.